Spirit, the Vortex of Creation Introduction There are many influences within our day that create the experience manifested. Modern science and material thinking would have you think that the body is primary and that mental experiences come from complex interactions of chemistry within the brain. Well, why do we sleep? Don't we awaken and fall asleep according to the circadian rhythm? In mind, the shifter and reorganizer of nodes, we see that as our physical body rotates with the earth, that our conscious fields undergo gyroscopic precession as they are guided by tidally locked fluids of the fifth dimension. In body, the mind's spaceship, we see how sound, light, matter, and magnetism emerge from our greatest inertial reference frame as we orbit the center of all moments. It is all a relative scenario. Fluid on the inside is crunched, creating matter, while fluid that is on the outside is light stretching away. In the past, the opposite effect is occurring. It is always an overlapping of one half past and one half future, as projections of mind synchronize to create a fluid experience. Spirit, the vortex of creation, shows a bigger picture. We see that our perceptions of body and behaviors are regular and cyclical nature with the natural processing of spirit. It is all spirit, and all spirits have a relative body. Your spirit, the raw energy of your creation, starts from the beginning of time and spirals inward along the habitable spiral of perception into dream state, into awake state, and then continues inward to the center of time. This natural spiraling of energy inwards is what causes perceptions to process. As this raw energy drifts inwards, it passes through all the incarnations of the self, past, present, and future. We see that these processional cycles are regular in nature and highly influence human behavior and cultural developments. Were people from the past less advanced, more advanced, or just undergoing a different injection of conscious vibration within the great day of the 25,920 year procession of the earth? Let us now examine the 25,920 year processional cycle in more detail. We see ancient cultures have looked at this long, and many systems have been developed. Traditional Hindu cosmologists have broken the cycle into four yugas, experiencing each twice. Modern Western cosmologists have broken it into twelve cycles of the zodiac. Here we, we will relate these cycles to the vibrations of conscious experience within the natural circadian rhythm. The Procession of Earth the Earth undergoes precession every 25,920 years. What exactly does this mean? As the Earth rotates, the North Pole wobbles like a top, making circles over long periods of time. Considering the magnetic field of the Earth, it could be considered the direction the Earth is facing in relationship to celestial bodies like our galactic center or neighboring galaxies. Relating that to something more on a human level, we could compare ourselves to the Earth. Half of the day when we look up, we are looking towards the sun, and half of the day we are looking up towards the stars. The same is true for the earth. Half the cycle consists of looking towards the center of all moments, and half may relate to looking away from this greatest center. Experiences emerge physically as a secondary byproduct. It is like night and day, but for the earth itself. Our 24-hour daily cycle of conscious procession relates directly to this effect, but on a grander scale of 25,920 years. It could, it could be considered a day within the perception of the Earth. Tidally Locked Fluids of the Fifth Dimension Knowing the primary conscious modes of our body in relationship to our experience, we may map the circadian rhythm within the fifth dimension. When we make this map, as seen in the fifth dimension, we see that our perception is like a gyroscope hanging on a string at a 90 degree angle. This shows us that the focus of our experience is the center of influence of these tidally locked spheres within the fifth dimension. For example, in mind, the shifter and reorganizer of nodes, we created fifth dimensional spheres that orbit regularly. We gave the delta wave a 24 hour orbit, the theta wave a 12 hour orbit, the alpha wave a six hour orbit, and the beta wave a three hour orbit. As these spheres orbit, you see that the center of our influence could be the center point of these spheres. It's a big loop of perception, followed by a tight loop of perception. We can now make the same map for the Earth's precession, and we can give names to different spheres. 
there would be a sphere that rotates once every 25,920 years. Divide that by 2 and you get the rotation rate of the next sphere. This would be 12,960 years. Divide that by 2 and you get the next orbit, which is 6,480 years. And divide that one more time for the next rotation, which is 3,240 years. Let's now give names to these spheres of influence that guide our perception and put them into tidal locking. We can now see how the perception of Earth drifts in and out on regular timed intervals and relates directly to the conscious modes of planetary life. Just to relate, in 25,920 years there are 9,460,800 days. That may be considered the difference in scale when comparing the Earth's consciousness to the human consciousness. However, they both work in harmony and both must be in harmony for life and experience to flourish. The Earth Sleeps What we see is that the Earth itself has a circadian rhythm that it follows that affects all life on it. Just like the human body, certain systems turn off and on during our daily procession. The same is true for the Earth. The simplest definition of being awake is being conscious of the physical realm. While asleep, the mind is not aware of the physical and we are somewhat being guided back to the laminar flow of our creation. The main benefit of sleep is rejuvenation. However, while asleep, we are not eating or drinking water. It's important to awaken in order to fill our bodies with the nutrients required for the body to stay functioning. Within the human body, we have many organs and cells which guide this process. The same may be true for the earth. Relating back to the infinite pool of experience and awareness, we may see that humans may be considered the white blood cells of the earth and universe. We have the ability to create or destroy any matter we choose fit. We have the ability to detour water supplies and even change the overall albedo with our constructions. The human is a simple part of the greater earth system, which includes volcanic cycles, weather cycles, temperature cycles, CO2 cycles, oxygen cycles, ocean cycles, and just like the human body, they all must work in harmony to create a healthy living being. The Earth Awakens Just like the human circadian rhythm is controlled by tidally locked fluids within the fifth dimension, so is the circadian rhythm of the planet Earth. Consider this the primary vortex of creation that contains the primal fluid spiraling from infinitely large to infinitely small. Conscious fields are created by the relationship of the fluid within it. Each harmonic of conscious experience is controlled by the orbital rate and distance from center. For example, for humans, our tidally locked fluid is related to the four local spheres within our relative day. This means that our conscious experience is guided by spheres of the fifth dimension that relate to our conscious harmonics. The same vortex that gives awareness to the human gives awareness to the earth itself, and so the circadian rhythm offers us much insight into the phases of the earth in relationship to traditional yuga, zodiac, and law of one cycles. Here we've placed the yuga, zodiac, and law of one processional systems on a single wheel. Wrapped around is the circadian rhythm. In our wheel, the earth is in the center and the sun is orbiting counterclockwise once every 25,920 years. The Ages of the Zodiac In the zodiac system, the placement on the wheel is related to the sun's location during the vernal equinox. It is then divided into 12 cycles of 30 degrees each. It is a rather simple system consisting of 12 ages. We have the Aquarius, Capricorn, Sagittarius, Scorpio, Libra, Virgo, Leo, Cancer, Gemini, Taurus, Aries, and Pisces. Each age is 2,160 years. Yugas of the Processional Cycle In the Yuga system, the Kali Yuga began at the end of Krishna's era, which was approximately at 3,102 BCE. By knowing we are currently in 2022 CE, we may add the two numbers together to see that 5,124 years have passed since the beginning of the first Kali Yuga. What exactly does this mean? The Yugas of the Processional Cycle are the Kali, Dwapara, Tetra, and Sat. The Kali Yuga lasts for 1,296 years. The Dwapara Yuga lasts for 2,592 years. 
The Tetra Yuga lasts for 3,888 years, and the Sat Yuga lasts for 5,184 years. The divisions of this system may not make sense at first. However, after relating the circadian rhythm, we may find great insight. Just like the human conscious harmonics, the Earth experiences each unique vibration in two different ways per orbit. It experiences once as an inward motion and once as an outward motion as we orbit the center of all moments. The end of Krishna's era marks the beginning of Kali out. If 5,124 years have passed since Krishna's era, then we may simply add to see where we are in this cycle. Each Kali Yuga is 1,296 years long, so Kali out plus Kali in equals 2,592 years. This would be the start of Dwapara Yuga. The Dwapara Yuga lasts for 2,592 years. The total is 5,184 years. By subtracting 5,184 by 5,124, we may see that we are about 60 years from fully entering Tetra Yuga. It is nearly the same moment as fully entering the age of Aquarius as seen in the zodiac system. The Law of One The Law of One is a series of channeled works that discusses a similar concept. It is interesting how they speak of energy patterns that exist within each cycle and how they affect experience. In the Law of One teachings, we are in transition from what they call a yellow ray energy center into a green ray energy center. The Wheel Let's now take a closer look at our 25,920 year processional cycle and the various systems previously mentioned. The Delta Verse Now that we have aligned our wheel, we may relate the various systems to the circadian rhythm. Notice how we are in Sat Yuga for half of the cycle. When relating to the circadian rhythm, the only harmonic we are in for that long is the beta wave which is a turning point within our orbit of conscious density. This means within the conscious system we may orientate the midpoint of our beta experience to the midpoint of the sat yugas. It is interesting to see that when we do this, the various lengths of each yuga system seems to align perfectly in relationship to the relative length that each of our conscious harmonic vibrations last. Let's go step by step and relate. From mind, the shifter and reorganizer of nodes, we see that we experience each harmonic twice in two different ways. Once we are drifting in towards the noviverse, and once we are drifting out towards the loververse. Our turning point is approximately 12.45 a.m. This moment of our circadian rhythm could be considered the turning point in relationship to the Kali Yugas. In essence, this turning point near midnight is the turning point of Earth's conscious experience. At this moment on the wheel, we see that Kali out and Kali in relate directly to our Delta out and Delta in. The age of Tories would relate to Kali out and Delta out. The age of Aries would then relate to Kali in and Delta in as we move towards denser vibrations. These times, the age of Tories, the age of Aries, Kali in and Kali out would be equivalent of being in a deep sleep when relating to the circadian rhythm. This is a time when spiritual development is at its lowest. The Thetaverse As we continue to drift inwards, following the habitable spiral of perception, we see that a new harmonic is created once we hit a distance that is one-fourth the diameter of the previous wave. Relating to the circadian rhythm, this is the moment we are dreaming. We have entered the theta wave harmony of earth harmony. Here again we see how each yuga is related directly to a conscious harmonic. The theta wave may be related to Dwapara yugas and yellow ray energy system. In this model, the theta out relates directly to Dwapara out and the end of the age of Gemini and the start of the age of Tauris. Theta in relates directly to Dwapara in and the age of Pisces. The Alphaverse As we continue to drift inward, we reach a moment when we are again at one-fourth the diameter of the wave that is bigger, and we reach our alpha state of Earth harmony. This is the moment when the Earth awakens. It is like going from a dream state of theta into the awake state of alpha. 
It is interesting how this transition from theta to alpha seems to be highlighted in all other traditional systems as well. It is the moment when we transfer from Dwapara Yuga to Tetra Yuga, and also the moment when we go from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. This transition also symbolizes the transition from yellow ray energy centers to the green ray energy centers. As we drift inwards, alpha in relates to tetra in, both the ages of Aquarius and Capricorn, and also the green ray energy system. As we drift outwards, alpha out relates to tetra out, both the ages of Cancer and Gemini, and the green ray energy system. The beta verse. As we continue to drift inwards at a distance of one-fourth the previous wave, the beta wave of Earth consciousness is awakened. This is the moment of our most heightened states of being in all three aspects, mind, body, and spirit. The entire system, from the Earth to the human, is fully awake. Historical records indicate that this is the time we built the Great Pyramids of Egypt, the Sphinx, and countless other megalithic structures across the globe. Beta in relates directly to Sat in, the age of Sagittarius and Scorpio, and the Blue Ray energy center. Beta out relates directly to Sat out, the age of Virgo and Leo, and the Blue Ray energy center. One thing to note is that in our updated model, which includes the circadian rhythm, is that we have added a section of green, alpha mid, which is placed directly at the turning point of Sat in and Sat out, and corresponds directly to the age of Libra. Why might have we added this dip? All conscious experience is related and stems from the same primal vortex of creation. As fluid rotates above, it also rotates below, and realms of experience overlap. They are all tidally locked in the great whirlpool of creation.